morning, everyone. Let's stand together as we come to worship. All right, let's uh, open up our time of worship in a word of prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for who you are and for what you've done for us and how you continue to provide for us, Lord. Lord, that you gave us salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, through his blood. And that you give us the Spirit to lead us, and to guide us, and to equip us. And so, Lord, we're gathered here this morning to worship you in spirit and in truth, that you may be glorified, that you may be our King and our Lord this morning. So, Lord, center our hearts towards you, Lord, Father God. Direct our eyes and our hearts towards you at this time, that we may look to the cross, that we may look to your Son, Jesus Christ, and to you alone. So lead us in this time. And give us joy as we sing together and as we praise you, Lord. We thank you so much. And all this in your son's name we pray. Amen. Let's sing together. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. You never change. You never fail, oh God. True are your promises. True are your promises. You never change. You never fail, oh God. So we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. Yeah, we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who to come what is your love and grace what is your love and grace you never change you never fail oh God Let's sing that again why is your love and grace what is your love and grace what is your love and grace you never change you never fail oh god so we raise up holy hands to praise the holy one who was and is and is to come yeah, we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. You were, you are, you will always be. You And it's 
is to come. Yeah, we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. Who was and is and is to come who was and is and is to song together, all creatures of our God and King. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, oh praise Him, hallelujah, thou burning sun with golden beams. Thou silver moon with softer gleam, oh praise Him, oh praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou rushing wind that art so strong, ye clouds that sail in heaven along, oh praise Him, Alleluia. Thou rising moon in praise rejoice, ye lights of evening find a voice oh praise him oh praise him oh, hallelujah 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 let all things their creator blessed and worship him in humbleness oh praise him alleluia praise praise the father praise the son the Spirit three in one. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. 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 Lift up our voices and sing it out together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 Alleluia, oh, Alleluia, oh, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Christ's assurance, steady anchor in the fury of the storm. When the winds of doubt blow through me and my sails have all been torn, in the suffering, in the sorrow, when my sinking hopes are few, I will hold fast to the anchor, it shall never be removed. Christ assurance, steady anchor, while the tempest rages on. When temptation claims the battle, and it seems the night has won. Deeper still then goes the anchor, though I justly stand accused. I will hold fast to the anchor, it shall never be removed. Christ assurance, steady anchor, through the floods of unbelief, a hopeless somehow. Oh, my soul, now lift your eyes to Calvary. This my ballast of assurance, see his love forever proved. All my hope is in the anchor, it shall never be removed. Christ assurance, steady anchor, as we face the wave of death. When these trials give way to glory, as we draw our final breath, we will cross that great horizon, clouds behind and life secure. The calm will be the better for the storms that we endure. Christ is sure of our salvation, ever faithful, ever true. We will hold fast to the anchor, it shall never be removed. Christ is sure of our salvation, ever faithful, ever true. We will hold fast to the anchor, it shall never be praises robed in frail humanity in our longing in our darkness now the light of life has come look to christ who condescended took on flesh to ransom us Come behold the wondrous mystery 
He the perfect Son of Man In His living, in His suffering Never trace nor stain of sin See the true and better Adam Come to save the hell-bound man Christ the great and sure fulfillment of the law in him we stand come behold the wondrous mystery christ the lord upon the tree in the stead of ruined sinners Hangs the Lamb in victory. See the price of our redemption. See the Father's plan unfold. Bringing many sons to glory. Grace unmeasured, love untold. Come behold the wondrous mystery Slain by death, the God of life But no grave could ever restrain Him Praise the Lord, He is alive What a foretaste of deliverance How unwavering our hope Christ in power, resurrected, as we will be when He comes. What a foretaste of deliverance, how unwavering our hope. Christ in power, resurrected, as we will be when He comes. Christ in power resurrected as we will be when he comes. Christ in power resurrected as we will be when he comes. Father, we thank you. When we look to your son, Jesus Christ, we see the price that was paid for our redemption. That we would be forgiven and that we would be taken in. That you would continue to renew us, that you would sanctify us and make us holy. And that you would set aside to be your people and that you would be our God. What a blessing, what a joy. What a privilege, Lord. And we pray that this time of worship it would be one that is wholehearted, that we give to you all that we have, everything that you give to us, that we turn it back to you, that we exalt you, and that we praise you, and we glorify you. So, Lord, we thank you for this time. May you continue to move us and shape us through your word and lead us and guide us by your spirit, Lord. So we thank you and we love you. And all this in your son's name we pray. Amen. Now at this time as we go around, we're going to have a short time of greeting.
Good morning, everybody. Oh, bye, Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sunday morning worship. Announcements for today: uh, the D Discovery class is continuing, and it, there will be a one this coming Saturday, November 11th. There's still space about for five more people. Um, so if you haven't signed up yet, please do email me and let me know that you'll be attending. This is the new structured, new restructured Discovery class. So even if you take it in the past. We really encourage you to take it again and recommit as a member of our church. Um, there will also be a class on December 9th if you can't make it this Saturday. The Salam Center Thanksgiving Banquet is happening in two weeks on November 18th. And we are still in need of volunteers to help with setup, um, particularly with decorations and hosting tables. So if you're interested in helping out, please email me. Um, this is a great opportunity to minister to the refugee families that we've been reaching out to through the Salam Center in Baltimore. Uh, their families mainly from Syria and other countries in uh, the Middle East. So please join us. If you have any questions, you can feel free to email me. And also the book donation for the Salam Center families is continuing. Um, a lot of them, especially the parents, don't yet speak English. And so one way we're trying to support them is by providing children's books so that they can read with their kids at home and still have English in the home and um, practice with their kids. Also, we have an opportunity to hear, about, uh, hear a presentation on missions in North Korea. There are some missionaries that our church is connected with, and so they'll be sharing on, also on November 18th at 9 a.m. And so if you're interested to learn more about that, uh, please join us for that. We haven't determined a room yet, but we'll be announcing that next week. But this is a great opportunity to hear uh, about what God is doing in that part of the world, and so I encourage you to come out for that. Also, um, one change about the weekly prayer meeting this week, baptism service is happening on Wednesday at 7.30 uh, instead of the regular Renew um, KM uh, prayer service that they have. And so we're, we'll all be joining that as well. So um, for those of you who regularly come out for the Wednesday prayer meeting, we'll be joining 7.30 for the baptism service instead of having our regular prayer time. Um, I'm personally really excited for this because we have 11 YM students being baptized. And so I want to encourage you to come out for that, yeah. <laughs> it's really exciting to see God working in their lives. So um, I encourage you to come out. I personally love baptism. When I watch baptisms, it makes me want to get baptized again. I'm like, baptize me again. So uh, please come out and celebrate with us on Wednesday. And I believe...
Phil is doing their scripture reading. <laughs> Please rise for the reading of scripture. Today's passage can be found in Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days the decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her, birth, for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. This is the word of God. You may be seated. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Can you hear me in the back? Okay, all right, great. Um, well, I'd like to start by just saying, I bless you in Jesus' name. And you're, you're supposed to answer amen. <laughs> um, and, you know, I tried this in the first service, and uh, w when I did it, I, I really liked it. And what I did was, uh, you know, I just blessed you in Jesus' name, and I feel like, you know what? I actually need blessing too. So when I say on a count of three, one, two, three, you say, you say to me, I bless you in Jesus', me in Jesus name. Can you say that? All right. One, two, three. I bless you in Jesus' name. I already feel blessed. It, it's really true. Uh, <clears throat> thank you so much. Hey, um, great announcements about the baptism, and I just want to give my plug. Hey, uh, I just, if you can all come out, uh, we're just going to do a lot of praise. It's going to be a short message on baptism, but most of it's going to be like testimonies, you know, and uh, a lot of them is going to be in English, uh, and it's going to be, you know, read out loud, and then we're going to have the, the baptism tank right over here, and it's just going to be a great time of celebration. Uh, it's just really focused on what it means to follow Jesus. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. I hope many of you, uh, maybe you don't usually come out on Wednesday prayer, but uh, uh, it starts at 7.30. So I um, hope you can put that on your calendar and try to make it. And uh, the other thing I, I want you to know, um, for, how many of you have children in CM? Raise your hand. Okay, some of you. Okay, some of you. Okay. Just so that you know what's going on. This year... Uh, with our new uh, CM pastor with a great vision of using holidays as a way not to just celebrate among ourselves but to actually really reach out to the community. Um, and so uh, she uh, challenged everybody to instead of like, you know, you don't want to give out candy and you go into the basement and turn off all your lights and don't see anybody, don't do that. But actually, take that time to maybe make packages. And perhaps, you know, you, you know our busy lives, we don't usually see our families. And if you knock on strangers on a, on a normal day, people will think you're really strange. But on Halloween night, everybody goes around. And so if you can just take like a small package, uh, just uh, with a, you know, say hello note, or maybe even say Jesus loves you, uh, and then you hand it out. Um, there was a, uh, and people did that, and they were just phenomenal response and some people were scared but they did it and it was a wonderful way to reach out and so in the future as we look at holidays we're gonna we're gonna continue to um to take steps of faith to uh, to reach out so uh hope you can do that in the future with halloween as well as other holidays like christmas that's coming uh well today um the passage that was written uh is really about christmas but you say wait a minute isn't it a little bit early for Christmas? This is like two months from now. Uh, but we're doing a, a series on the book of Luke. And so we, you know, the first chapter is like 80 verses long. And we got like about five, five sermons out of uh, 80 verses. And we're on chapter two. Um, so just give you a little bit uh, 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 heads up. Uh, <clears throat> boy. You know, I speak Korean, and then I come here, and I'm, you know, words just don't come up in English. <laughs> I, just, I just forgot to say heads up. What's heads up? Okay. All right. Uh, 
heads up about what's coming. You know, December is going to be our uh, missions focus month. And so uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, again, it's going to be focused on Jesus, which is what Christmas is about. So uh, that's in month of December. Um, today I'll probably uh, finish uh, for a time on the book of Luke. We'll finish with this and then we'll, we'll take a look at some other things that we want to focus on. Uh, actually about how to plan for Christmas uh, in the next uh, few weeks. Um, and so I'm looking forward to that. And then in December, we're going to go toward uh, Jesus' heart for the nations uh, and how we can continue to be a missional church. So uh, that's heads up. Uh, today, so we're looking at uh, Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 1 through 7. Seven short verses. Uh, if you've been to church for any length of time, you should be very familiar with this. Um, but um, I want to begin the message by um, but just mentioning that about a year ago, which is uh, we just celebrated the 24th anniversary of this church. Uh, and last week we celebrated, uh, we partook of uh, <coughs> the Lord's Supper. And uh, it was just a wonderful time, I felt. <coughs> And, uh, and I was, uh, as I was preparing for this message, and particularly this passage, I was looking back a year ago because um, a year ago, uh, the same day as last week, uh, was uh, when I got installed. And uh, so after installation, I remember, you know, what should be the first message uh, after installation? And I was trying to ask the Lord, give, you know, give me a message, maybe for the congregation, but it's, this is a really message for me. And the Lord gave, uh, at that time, Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse 8. You, uh, and some of you know it really well. Some of you may not know it. So uh, this, is a, this is an introductory uh, to what I'm going to say be, uh, today. But let me read it for you. Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. It says, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. So um, the... The message for me is, what was, uh, for me was, that no matter what you do here at this church, you have to remember this one main purpose of why you're here. And that is that you are to pursue knowledge. I mean, it's the Lord's message. You are to pursue knowledge of Jesus Christ. And to consider knowing Jesus of so much greater value than anything else, any other knowledge that you, uh, uh, you have uh, come across or that you have learned. Knowing Jesus, personally knowing Jesus and continuing to see the, uh, the depth of who he is is the most noble, it's the highest purpose for why, which we were uh, created. And so, um, and besides that, everything else we've accomplished, according to Paul, was like... Um, Uh, like nothing, like trash. Um, and so um, that was something that was uh, like an anchor. We talked about anchor today. I felt like that was an anchor uh, for uh, my ministry uh, or the, what, what God has entrusted to me um, and my family here. And uh, so uh, as I was looking at this passage, and I was, I, actually there were a lot of different things going through my mind, Uh, the Lord reminded me of this and, uh, and just said, you know, every time we come to the word, uh, our purpose is, uh, our main purpose is, what can we know? How can we know you, Jesus? How can we meet you, Jesus? How can we encounter you, Jesus? How can we uh, understand who you are and to, to be, uh, as we behold you, the more we behold someone that we admire, Uh, the more we become like that person. And so, um, uh, as I look at this, it's such a familiar verse. And, uh, and, uh, but I wanted, like, I wanted something that, once again, uh, gripped my heart. And so I was asking the Lord uh, about that. Um, you know, last week, as we uh, partook uh, of the Lord's Supper, Uh, we focus on the death of Jesus. We focus on the death of Jesus. And you remember that the key thing that, uh, uh, that we talked about is that uh, the power of the world and the, the power of Calvary uh, it, it is so different in its essence. Um, there's a military power 
that overpowers people, but Jesus broke those powers of the world and all the demonic forces behind those uh, 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 human powers, uh, not through uh, brute force, but it was through the, the love that was shown uh, on the cross by dying, by putting himself there. And uh, so uh, today we come to this passage too, uh, expecting that uh, the Lord is going to show us that who he is. And uh, you remember in uh, many of you in young adults ministry, you're, you're, you've uh, studied, uh, you're studying Genesis and you started with Luke chapter 24 uh, in which you looked at how the Old Testament scriptures, uh, if you uh, come to Jesus uh, with those scriptures, you, uh, you will understand that really all of that is about Jesus uh, and how Jesus fulfilled all the things that were in the Old Testament. Um, and uh, so we come to Luke now, uh, chapter 2. With all of that, uh, is what can we learn uh, of Jesus? Now this is, last week was the death of Jesus. Today is about the birth of Jesus, right? Uh, what, what can the Lord show us through the birth of Jesus? Uh, perhaps some of this may be a repeat, but let's see. Let's see what we can, what we can, uh, get, uh, what we can glean. First of all, as, as you look, as you think, all right, Jesus, the eternal word of God, the eternal son of God, taking the, the form of flesh and then coming in uh, in the form uh, of a baby. Imagine you have all power in the universe and you want to enter into a location to exert influence. What kind of form would you uh, come? Would you come with, uh, you know, all the, all the, I don't know, all the money in the world, all the, I don't know, spiritual power in the world, and show with this mightiness uh, into this, this world? If you had all power, if you had all knowledge, if you had all of that, um, how would you enter uh, a new place? to exert the influence of your kingdom. And I just think that, um, uh, that the, the form in which Jesus comes into this world is very uh, instructive uh, as to how he really works. Um, you know, the verse one, it begins by saying, in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus. So Caesar... Augustus, you remember, you may remember from your history lesson that he was the son of, uh, or the adopted son of Julius Caesar. Uh, and uh, I think he was born somewhere around 64 uh, BC. Um, and he had power to rule over. And uh, he made a, you know, he, he gave a command. And uh, everybody used to take a census at that time. So this is a background of an all-powerful, at that, a humanly speaking, all-powerful guy uh, ruling with fear and intimidation and military power. And here comes Jesus. Last week we saw Jesus on the cross. Today we're looking at him at his birth. And the way he, uh, he died was consistent with the way he came to uh, this planet. And that is he came in the form of weakness not in, a, in the form of power. He came in the form of a babe, um, not with all the powers of this world. Um, so, uh, and, and not only that, yeah, he, he, not only was he weak, but if you're a babe, if you're a babe, just born, you, um, you are dependent. You're dependent on your, your parents. We were all dependent at one point. whether we like to remember that or not, uh, right? We were dependent. We were babes. We were completely dependent. We could not take care of ourselves. We could not feed ourselves. We could not change our own diapers. We could not go to our own bathroom. We had to have everything done for us, and Jesus came in this form. All-powerful, all-knowing, you know, all -knowing, but he comes in the form of a babe, in the form of weakness, And so I, I think about 
uh, leadership uh, you know, is a challenge to me. You know? uh, or all of us in some form of leaders. How do we exert influence in terms of leadership in the, in the, among the people and the, in the area that God gives us? It could be a family. It could be a marriage. It could be children. It could be a classroom. Uh, it could be a small group. It could be uh, just where we live uh, among our neighbors. So, uh, Jesus came in the form of weakness. And I think it's something that we need to, uh, to meditate deeply as we uh, move forward uh, in, the, in the way we exert influence of the kingdom. Uh, well, uh, related to that, um, uh, I thought about uh, how Jesus... Um, was, uh, was inside a womb of a woman. Now, do you guys remember how many months does it take from conception to delivery? How many months does it take? Nine months. Men don't answer. <laughs> women know better. <laughs> Nine months, right? 40 weeks? Is it wrong? Nine months, thank you. Thank you, Sonny. <laughs> uh, nine months. Um, women who have born babies, did you ever feel like during the nine months, I wish it were a lot shorter? Yeah, I wish it were a lot shorter. Why does it have to take nine months, right? Nine months. Um, <clears throat> And, and it's like that with many things in our life. You know, things take time. Things take time. And sometimes we go, you know, God, you know, we want to live a supernatural lifestyle with, you know, praying to God, and God is going to answer all the prayers, and it's going to be awesome. Well, guess what? Jesus did not take shortcuts in coming to birth. Jesus did not take shortcuts. He actually... Uh, took the same road that all human beings take when they're born. And so uh, my, uh, the first insight was that Jesus came in the form, entered this world in the form of weakness. Second is that he did not take shortcuts when he came. He actually went through the whole course. Hebrews uh, chapter 2 Verse 17 says this about Jesus, and let me uh, read it to you. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17 says this. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Therefore, he, that is Jesus, had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God. So the key, pass, key phrase here that I want you to look at is he was made to be like his brothers in every respect, even in the respect of taking time and not taking a shortcut. Uh, you know, a miracle baby, right? You can say, well, God does miracles, so why can't like nine months be changed into two months? God could do that, right? But he didn't do that. It took the whole five, nine months. It seems like, you know, maybe a... I don't know if you think this is a silly point, but I think it's a very profound point um, because, um, <clears throat> uh, because not taking shortcuts and how in this 21st century world we love everything so fast. We love everything so fast uh, that uh, if we could, we want to take shortcuts in the things that actually should take time. Uh, and Jesus, when he came, he was all powerful, but he did not take shortcuts. He took through the whole nine months. He came like us in every respect. Thirdly, it's also related to all of this. Do you remember? That, okay, let's think about Maria for, uh, for a second. Maria and Joseph. Let's, see, let's, let's just kind of put ourselves in their uh, shoes for a moment. And uh, uh, so you remember that Maria was visited by the angel Gabriel. I mean, not everybody gets to be visited by angel Gabriel. And then uh, is told 
that you know, she's going to have a child uh, you know, in a miraculously. And the angel Gabriel begins the conversation. He says, uh, greetings, O h highly favored one. You're highly favored. You have favor of God. And so you're going to have this, this babe. And you think, all right, so my faith life now includes uh, encountering uh, a, an archangel, Gabriel, and I'm going to bear the Messiah. And uh, I think perhaps if I, I'm not a woman, but if I, if I were in that situation, Perhaps I would think, like, okay, this is going to, like, continue. This, I'm a highly favored one, and everything is going to go great. <laughs> well, not everything went great. So let's think, you know, for example, this census was supposed to be ordered, right? So when does this census registration need to take place? Just at the time around when she is supposed to have a baby. And you think, God, couldn't you have made the timing a little bit differently? You know, so I don't have to travel when I am doing this. I mean, couldn't you have worked it out so that I am there much earlier or whatever? But um, uh, it didn't happen. And, and you've seen Jesus film and so on. It, and, uh, you know, I've never been pregnant, but I hear that you can become very, I don't know, h e a v y And <laughs> well, I better not talk too much about that. <laughs> uh, it's a hard time. It's, it's not easy having like an eight pound, uh, you know, baby inside and you have to carry extra eight pounds plus all the other extra weight that you have to carry around and your, your back hurts and... Uh, And uh, in that situation, you know, you need to be on a donkey. And, and you know, it's just, you know, you wouldn't want, I think, to be like traveling on a donkey when you're pregnant, uh, eight months, uh, what have you, eight and a half months. And uh, so how did Jesus enter into the world? How does, what is this picture of the, that just at the time of the birth, there's all this discomfort discomfort in uh, birthing, you know, giving birth to this child. But I'm a highly favored one. And as you know, Joseph was a descendant of David. So they go to Bethlehem and they, they knock on doors and, and the inn and it's all, it's all taken. Um, I have a feeling actually not everything was taken. I have a feeling that if they had a lot of money, actually, uh, some hotel owner, you know, you have that much money, I'll give you a room. You can take my room, you know. I think it would have been like that. And so a highly favored one, a descendant of David, and you're going to have the, the Messiah as your child, and you think, God, where are you? Could you give us a room? Could you give us a room? And instead of giving a, a nice, comfortable room, uh, they were given a room in a stable with uh, a lot of animals. And uh, as you know, uh, was born and placed in a manger, a feeding trough uh, for animals. This is, uh, this is, the, um, uh, this is the way uh, Jesus was born. And so it's, uh, it's not about comfort. Jesus entering into the world was not about comfort. And I want to say to you, being highly favored of God does not necessarily mean a comfortable life here on earth. It really isn't. And the mother and father of Jesus experienced this, that even though they were carrying the Messiah, that there was not a room. How many of you have felt like, God, but I prayed. Why aren't you coming through? Uh, with the thing that I prayed for. I thought that if I'm a highly favored one, if I'm a child of God, if I believe in Jesus, then, you know, I'm your child and you're supposed to make everything go well. Um, as we know, uh, that is, uh, if that was the purpose 
uh, why we believe in Jesus, and maybe we, we have an expectation. But the purpose of why we come to uh, believe in Jesus is actually to have a relationship, to actually to know the creator of the universe in whatever situation that we're in. And so, this is a reminder for us. This story is a reminder for us of why we believe is the relationship. Now, blessings... God loves to give, as I, I, I like to say. He's a father. He loves to give blessings. But the blessings is not the main purpose. That is, the earthly blessings is not the main purpose of believing. It can be a result. It can be something that we experience. Uh, <clears throat> but it's not the main thing. It's not the main thing. The relationship is the main thing. So um, I... Uh, to bring this home, I, you know, also been doing this reading on the living life, uh, the 생명의 삶, uh, for those of you who are doing QT. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of great stories here, a lot of true stories. And I, I came across this one story. Um, uh, in, it was by a pastor who was talking about one of the parishioners. And he was saying that this parishioner uh, was just... beaming all the time. You, you can see this man's face and he was beaming with uh, just hope and so on. And uh, he was mentioning how like on a Wednesday night service, you know, it's kind of dark. It's like he sits way on the back and usually you can't see somebody or you won't notice anybody in the back like that. But his face was so radiant, he couldn't keep his, you know, he couldn't keep his eyes from not going uh, to this person. And so you go, well, why, is this, why was this person so radiant? Um, and he found out a little bit about uh, his background. He was actually uh, a very wealthy man at one point. He owned many houses, and he had a huge business. And uh, <clears throat> uh, so he was, uh, he was living really well. And then uh, he came. He came to trust in Jesus. But after he trusted Jesus, everything started to go badly. Um, his, uh, his business went bankrupt. Uh, he started to be in financial trouble. Um, and so you think, humanly speaking, it's a situation, it's like, why God? Why God is this happening to me? Um, and, uh, and he continues to live, and uh, his, his uh, health started to deteriorate, and he began to have... Uh, uh, blood uh, coming, you know, uh, blood leaking um, uh, from his brain. And uh, so he was kind of in and out of consciousness. Uh, and then when he came out of consciousness, he uh, said to his wife, um, 여보, it means wife in Korean, 여보, 천국을 봤는데 너무 좋아. I saw heaven and it's so amazing. I, I want to go there. Uh, but you, 당신, you, you know, this, this dark world, you got you to live in this dark world. I'm so sorry. I feel so sorry for you. You got to live in this dark world. He saw what it was like. Um, it's a reminder. Uh, there is a, when we have a favor of God, it's all of heaven. There's a, the heavenly angels are looking at us. Right? When we have favor. And when we have like heavenly angels looking at us, it doesn't necessarily mean that on earth people are looking at us with envy or admiration. Ma Mary didn't have admiration of anyone, but she had the favor of God. She had the favor of heavenly angelic uh, beings looking at her. You are favored. And so uh, when we live, we need to live with this... Um, this uh, understanding that there is, a, there is an invisible reality that is greater than the reality that we can see with our eyes. Jesus did not take the road of comfort. And believing in Jesus does not guarantee a road of comfort. And being highly favored of God does not mean that we have a comfortable road. Uh, God sometimes does. you know, moves and moves mountains and, and, and rivers and, uh, uh, and, and opens. Uh, 
But if we become enamored, too enamored with the success that gets poured out on us, and that becomes the focus, then we have lost. Uh, we have we have lost uh, our eyes for why we were created, why we were saved through Jesus. Uh, it's for this heavenly reality um, to experience. So. Uh, I believe this is how yeah, Jesus entered the world, not in a, in a comfortable way. But lastly, I want to share, you know, so then how did, uh, so there was, you know, how did Jesus enter and how did he, you know, what ways did he not enter? And so in the last point here is uh, Jesus brings into the kingdom of God and by Jesus coming in, coming into this world, uh, he is bringing the kingdom of God, his rule, Uh, with him and how did it begin where did it begin it began with one person who welcomed him and that was Mary uh, Mary welcomed him into her life and through that it wasn't like an immediate like uh, expansion of the kingdom of God it was a seed it was a very quiet That's why we call it a quiet entrance. It was a very quiet entrance, and it took a while for it to move. Luke chapter 13, verse 20, talks about uh, Jesus giving a parable about the kingdom of God, that the kingdom of God is like yeast that you put into a dough, and, uh, and what it does is that in time, it makes it go, you know, it makes it uh, rise, right? It's the yeast that makes the dough rise. Uh, and so you need the yeast into the dough, connect with it, and then in time it rises. It, it's really giving a picture of a quiet way which the, the power of the kingdom, without being noticed by people, it begins to influence uh, the, the surroundings. And you and I are, I believe, um, results of this quiet entrance. Different places in our history before There was somebody in our family, some friend, entered, and that person welcomed, and through that person, we were connected. And then another person was connected. And the, and the dough rose, uh, and there was an influence. And so wherever you are now, and wherever I am now, it is an opportunity uh, at that point to say, you know what, I have welcomed Jesus, and I can expect uh, him to move and to influence the surroundings. Mind you, Jesus, when he came and entered, he did not immediately start teaching. I, I, I love to, to point this out and say, Jesus waited 30 years plus nine months before he started to proclaim. What did he do the 30 years and nine months? He identified with us. He identified with us. Okay, I talked a lot. Is this making sense at all? Yeah. Phil, you're the best. You're the best, I tell you, man. You're the best. <clears throat> um, last week we talked about the death of Jesus. How he did not counter the powers of the empire which seeks to crush people who are against He put himself right in the middle of it and he took the impact of that horrible weight of sin. Today we look at the birth of Jesus in which he did not bring with all the powers of heaven uh, when he was born. He, was, he came in weakness. Look at your relationships now. Do you go to your relationships with better arguments, better knowledge, better smarts, uh, better education, uh, whatever it may be, uh, or age, or experience, and basically sit down and let me tell you, or is it, and Lord, please humble me too, is it, is it going uh, like Jesus did? And to identify first, with whoever that person is, whoever that uh, surrounding is. And then, and then go from there. Uh, perhaps it's with listening first. And so, yeah, God's been telling me a lot about listening 
lately. I, you need to listen. That's what, that's what God said to me. You need to listen. You need to listen better. You need to listen better to your wife. Amen? <laughs> you need to listen better to your, your, your children. You need to listen better to your parents. You need to listen better to your, um, to your co-workers. You just need to listen better. Uh, you need to follow the way of Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, there was a time when Jesus came and he, you know, he began to teach. But this, this part that we're meditating today is how he came uh, in his birth. And uh, that's Jesus. This is Jesus, who, whom we have received as our Savior, as our Lord. He is the one that we are to follow. And today, we go, you know, today, whatever happens today, my goal is going to be to know you, to partner with you in going into the situations that you send me. Would you like to do that? I bless you in Jesus' name to do that. I, you can say amen to that. Okay, uh, the sink is a little bit off. One more time. I bless you in Jesus' name to partner with him today. Okay, we're getting better. <laughs> let's, um, you know, let's remember. It's two months down the line uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, Christmas can be so much about everything else about Jesus And I, I hope that it will be different, more different this year uh, as we go forward, as we meditate. Who is this Jesus? Uh, why did he come this way? And how is that profound for me, for my personal life, my personal relationships right now? I hope that will be uh, uh, just a, a great time of uh, awakening, um, deep appreciation Uh, for where God has placed us and the people that God has placed around us. Um, <clears throat> and we can go to them as Jesus came to this world. So uh, I want to just ask the praise team to, to come up and we, we want to get ready to sing our last praise song uh, to finish. Uh, but could you just, um, just bow your heads for a moment and just take a moment to pray uh, personally uh, to God and uh, um, And just give a short response. God, um, helping to know you. Um, um, help me to know, help us to know how amazing you are. That you're so different from the leaders of this world. You're so different in the way you come to people. So Lord, help us not to keep you in bay, at bay because of how busy we are, but to have a seeking heart, a welcoming heart to you, Jesus. Thank you that the place that you, uh, yeah, that you, the, the situations that you placed us, is a, uh, a situation where we can welcome you and partner with you, get to know you and to let, your, let you be known by the people around us. Would you like just do an increase of that, Lord, this uh, November and December, we pray. Uh, we pray all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Would you rise with me now? Forever reign. Let's ask Jesus to reign over us. Uh... You are good. You are good. When there's nothing good in me. You are love. You are love. On display for all to see. You are light. You are light. When the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. You are peace, you are peace, when my fear is crippling. You are true, you are true, 
Even in my wandering, you are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life. In you, death has lost its sting. And though I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares. To your embrace, light of the world forever. You are more, you are more than my words will ever say. You are Lord, you are Lord, all creation will proclaim. You are here. You are here, in your presence I'm made oh, You are God, you are God, of all else I'm letting go. And oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough nothing compares to your embrace light of the world forever my heart will sing no other name jesus will sing no other name Jesus Jesus my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus my heart will sing no other name of your love will always be enough nothing compares to your embrace light of the world forever and oh I'm running to your arms I'm running to your arms the riches of your love will always be enough Nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever. Lord, oh Lord, we feel like we come alive when we say to you, rain. reign over of us and how your love is enough is more than enough and nothing nothing compares with your love not any of the riches not any of the problems going away will compare with your embrace and lord we i want to pray for our congregation lord open our eyes to see why we were created to know this god through jesus christ our lord This amazing God, help us not to be so tempted by the things that don't really matter. Help us to embrace you. And I want to ask right now that your embrace just gets felt by everybody here. Lord, just pour out your presence 
and let them know how good you really are. God, thank you. Thank you for worship. Thank you for the opportunity to meditate on the birth of Jesus and uh, what that shows about who you really are. So Lord, as we go, we want to we go with your blessing, the, the blessing, the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Continue to embrace us as we go now forward into the world. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless.
둘, 하나, 둘. 박동은 선생님. 마이크를 테스트하고 있습니다. 하나, 둘. 하나, 둘, 원, 둘, 테스트. 여기요. 아, 아, 아까 둘, 저희 아, 1부 아, 때 목사님 아, 소리가 하나도 안 났거든요. 아, 아, 기타 아, 소리를 아, 조금. 아, 원, 투. 기타 소리를 줄여주시고 아, 목사님 아, 아, 소리를 아, 넣어주세요. 아, 아. 기타 소리를 조금 빼주시고요. 목사님 목소리 소리를 좀 2번에 넣어주세요. 네. 높여주세요. 기, 기타 소리를 조금 줄여주시고요. 저는, 저는 여기 모니터가 아예 안 나와요. 아, 아. 하나, 둘. 하나, 둘. 색, 색. 아, 아, 오늘 이곳에. 하나, 둘. 오늘 이곳에 계신 성령님. 아, 아, 아들 마이크를 테스트하고 있습니다. 마이크를 테스트하고 있습니다. 아들, 아들, 오늘 이곳에 아들, 아, 아, 아들, 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 아, 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 아들. 주님보다 앞서지 않고 겸손하게 주님의 말씀 기다리니 주님 손. 이곳에 계신 성령님 우리에게 말씀하시고 우리를 가르치소서 같이 우리 마음 열어주시고 주의 빛으로 밝혀 소소 주님보다 네. 괜찮아요? 목소리 잘 들려요? 여기 목사님 소리 2번 2번 목사님 모니터 목사님 소리 조금만 더 키워 주세요. 원, 투, 원, 원. 2번 갈게요. 도와주세요. 수고 많으셨어요. 가세요. 
들이 붙잡고 날마다 